want you to have had the, the experience of doing the ladder problem. But I also know that for some of you, this is all relatively new. And these problems, you know, are, are still kind of maybe sinking in. But this is a statics problem. And there are a variety of ways the ladder problem can be expressed. I'm going with the, the most straightforward way, and we're going to provide a couple simplifications. Uh, first, how many of you have actually climbed to one of these and stood on one? Okay, that's good. So that's a lot of you. Now, now there are a lot of different kinds of ladders. I'm talking specifically about a lean-to ladder or extension ladder like this. Who has been on a one of these? Okay, so that's almost all of you. Now, then you're aware that the extension ladder has a lot of things on the ladder to warn you of possible problems. We are making some dubious assertions about the way this actually works. And I myself, you can ask my kids, have been in some very precarious positions on a ladder before. Usually because I'm trying to do something crazy stupid for Halloween or for, for Christmas. I always believe in going a little bit higher, a little bit further, or maybe a little bit you know, deeper into the tree. You know, it doesn't really matter. But I've been in, in precarious places where I might have counted on the stability of the ladder more than I should have. But you know that there are limits on what the ladder can do. You can't get the ladder so close to the thing you're trying to climb up. You know that when you do, the ladder will pull away. Well, we're making a couple of assertions that aren't true. The first, we're going to make the assertion that where the person stands is a point mass that acts as a torque at that point of the ladder. This is not true. Okay, does everybody understand that it's not true? First, most of the time when you're on the ladder, you are not standing perpendicular to the ground. Many people hold on to the ladder and lean backwards. That means you're actually out there someplace. This changes the real center of mass of the system and makes your ladder not linear, but a, three, a, a two-dimensional object in a three-dimensional environment in which you could place the center of mass over the pivot point and haul, cause the ladder to, to, to roll backwards. You understand what I'm saying there? So we're going to assume you are standing in such a way that you are perpendicular to the ground and acting as a torque, uh, like a point mass, placed on that rung. Okay, that's different than reality for anybody who's been on a ladder. Second, some of you have come, I know I have, have come to rely a little bit on the friction between the wall and the ladder to assist you in stabilizing the ladder. It provides not only stabilization, but can also reduce your dependence on some of the friction on the ground. People have tried to maybe manipulate where the ladder is positioned by utilizing this friction. That's a dangerous game you're playing there. But for us, do you realize that that is a ever-shifting force? The higher, our, the higher you are up on the ladder, the more your place on the ladder causes a greater torque in this direction increasing this force and therefore increasing the frictional force that you get from the wall. Everybody follow along with that argument? Um, that's, uh, that makes for a relatively complicated problem. Uh, more complicated than, than you might believe because we also know that that frictional force isn't a direct proportion but an inequality. And you don't know if you're near the threshold or not. It's unpredictable how much friction is actually there. So for this question to remove some of the unpredictability, we are going to treat the wall as frictionless. And I do that in your homework too. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a neat complication. If you guys are, are, are into it, try it. Just put coefficient mu w for the coefficient of friction from the wall. See if you can work it out. You understand that homework is supposed to be a no contest try anyways, right? So for the rest of you who can't possibly do that. Uh, let's, let's set up a, a simple, straightforward ladder question. Let's say that the ladder is three meters long. Let's say that you, as a participant in this problem, are going to stand on the ladder. This is not you, but let's say that the person on the ladder is 80 kilos. It's about 190 pounds. Let's say the ladder itself is heavier than most ladders, 
and it is 20 kilos, but that the ladder itself is of uniform mass density, so its center of mass is at the middle of the ladder. That's not an unlikely thing, but a 20 kilo ladder is probably heavier than most. I have an aluminum ladder, it's like 30 pounds. This is more like a 45 pound ladder. So if you, had a, if you have a wooden extension ladder, it might be this heavy. I know that my long one that I can use to get the shutters on the house, that one is, is heavier than, than 40 pounds. But you know, a simple extension ladder for this length, three meters, 20 pounds is probably appropriate. We're gonna do 20 kilograms, makes the numbers nice. Um, there are three other forces acting in the system besides the two that I've identified. You should know what they are from yesterday. Can somebody name one? Normal force on the bottom of the ladder. So that would be from the ground acting upwards on the ladder. I'm going to call this normal force from the ground. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Hmm? There will be a normal force from the wall that has to be perpendicular to the wall and will be in that direction. And I'm drawing them not to scale. I'm drawing them big enough so they're easily seen. So we'll say normal force from the wall. It would be perpendicular to the wall. And there's one more. Yes, sir. What's that? The ladder's weight's already there. But there is another force that acts on the ladder. Yes, ma'am? Yeah, there'll be a frictional force from the ground. I believe the frictional force likely acts in this direction. Does that seem reasonable to you guys? So um, these are the forces that we're going to contend with. There are five forces. Everybody good? This is a statics problem. And because it is a statics problem, for the time being, net force equals zero. I'm not going to make any changes to our diagram right now. What I am going to say to you is that all of these forces act either horizontally or up and down. That makes our net force problem pretty easy. But we do have to assign an angle to the ladder. Here's the problem I want to do. And there are a lot of different ladder problems. A lot. There's a lot of variations. How high on the ladder can you safely stand before you exceed friction? How high on the ladder can you, how tall can the person be on the ladder without it pulling away from the wall? Um, what's the minimum coefficient of friction between the ground and the ladder to safely ascend the ladder? There's a lot. We're going to do the last of those three things. We're going to say, what is the minimum coefficient of friction that allows you to stand at a certain place on the ladder? Uh, that certain place is going to be two meters up the ladder. <coughs> Of all the questions I could ask, this one is probably um, level two out of three. You'll see this maybe as a level three question, but it is not. Uh, this is a very straightforward question. Uh, to me, to make a problem transition from level two to level three, you can't get away from having to have a connected set of equations to which there is a simultaneous solution. So this problem can sol be solved without a simultaneous solution by getting one force at a time. So I think you transition to a, a, a much harder problem when that can't be said, when you have to do a simultaneous solution. I mean, you have to do some kind of fancier math to be able to narrow down one of your, your unknowns. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? So this is still level two. It just has more forces and they're at angles. So let's start with the force portion of this problem because as a statics problem goes, we, are, we have forces first. And this is relatively easy because, like I said, all of our forces act either up and down or left and right. So, you know, like I have a downward force of 200 newtons. That's going to be the, the weight of the ladder. And a downward force of 800 newtons. That's the, the weight of the person. At the same time, upward force from the ground... That's the ground supporting the ladder. Now, I notice without doing anything else that we know how much force the ground must apply to the ladder. If friction were playing a role with the wall, that would not be true because there would be an upward force due to friction from the wall. 
And that makes this problem a level three problem because the frictional force would then be somewhat dependent on the other normal force, which is dependent on the other frictional force, and then you get a problem that requires a simultaneous solution. Do you see what I'm saying? Some of you are seeing it, some of you aren't, but friction is less than or equal to mu times the normal force. If there is friction at the wall here, I'd have a frictional force there, which would be unknown. And it would come from, let's look at the sideways forces, there's normal force from the wall, frictional force from the ground. I now have two frictional forces that are interdependent on each other. That makes for a more complicated problem. So that's why we're leaving out the frictional force on the, from the wall, because right now we have a more straightforward question. Now, I don't want to go any further than, than what I've done here, except we should go ahead and complete the net force portion of the problem. It's not much to do. I have net force in the x direction and net force in the y direction. They both must sum to be equal to zero. In the x direction, normal force on the wall equals the frictional force. In the y direction, normal force on the ground equals 200 plus 800 or 1,000 newtons. You may think we're done, we are not. I want the minimum amount of coefficient of friction for the ladder to stay in place. And this is an inequality, so we really don't know what that is to figure out our answer. We have the normal force, but we don't know how much friction, we don't know how much frictional force there is. All right, ready to move on? I picked 60 degrees as the angle I make my ladder with the wall. It's relatively safe, but probably a little, a little uh, smaller than I would actually do. I'd probably do 70 if it were me climbing the ladder, give me a little bit more height at the expense of stability. But 60 degrees is solid. You start going less than this and it feels weird to walk on ladders. Anybody have a light in a weird place in your house that you can only get to by doing something weird with a ladder? I have one where I have to kind of turn my ladder into a bridge between a rung on the stairs of my house and some other wall cavity to climb up to this weird light. It bugs the heck out of me. Years ago, we now have to transition to a torque problem, right? We've done the force problem. We need the torque problem. So I'm going to slide this off to the side because I like doing the torque problem with my, with the, uh, the, the, whatever our object is, placed in such a way that I can identify the forces separate and maybe clearer. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the ladder horizontal. That's not necessary. This is a me thing. It doesn't have to be a you thing. It's just a me thing. And we're gonna talk about the net torque. And yes, I'm gonna redraw all the forces, but there's not many. I mean, there's the ground acting this way. This is the normal force from the ground. And this is the frictional force from the ground. They are at a right angle to each other, but not to the ladder. This is 60 degrees. So this must be 30 degrees. Um, at the midpoint of the ladder, I have my 200 Newton weight of the ladder at 30 degrees. And I'm not going back to the other picture. I'm assuming you have your other picture right in front of you and can do this yourself. But I, I don't need to do that. I, I, I know what the picture looks like. 800 newtons, 30 degrees. And finally, normal force from the wall at 60 degrees. I've just taken the ladder and turned it on its side so I can kind of look at all my forces and help kind of, I don't know, lay out my torques. I do have to choose a place for my pivot point. And you have options, but let's, let's be clear. There are better options than others. I mean, I see three unknowns, and we know that placing the pivot point on an, un, on an unknown eliminates it. But I also see that I can eliminate an unknown and another torque if I place the pivot point here. 
Now, this is the natural pivot of the problem anyways, but I'm going to put it there because that way it's one less torque in my list of torques I have to deal with. And our goal is to try and reduce the number of unknowns. So that leaves only three torques acting in my system. Not terrible. I have the torque from the 200 Newton person or ladder. I have the torque from the 800 Newton person, and I have the torque from the wall. Three torques. R, F, sine of the angle. I like adding that little scaffolding, you know. So how many of your teachers? That's right. That's a good way to put it, and I'm okay with it. You know, of all the vices I have, that one's probably just middle, mid, uh, a mid-vice. I have much worse vices, so you know, I'll take this one. The fact that my, my whole lunch today was two culinary cookies, that's not, a good, that's not good. But it's, it's hard to turn down cookies. I'm, I'm sorry. It really is. And, and culinary cookies, you know, they're, they're chocolate chip to cookie ratio. If you get the right cookie, if you get their, their regular cookies, not the ones at the end of the dough, but the stuff that's in the middle, those are those, they have the right ratio going on. So I'm okay there. And if you get them when they're pretty early in the uh, run, they're soft enough. I like a solid chocolate chip cookie. So I, I actually, I, I am not picky. To me, the best dessert is cookie. Cookie's a good dessert. You can take your cakes and your pies and all that crap. That's fine. But I, I'm, a good, I'm a cookie person. Oreos? Who likes Oreos? Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm a good fan. Um, I got to hurry because somebody's like way ahead of me. They're already right hand ruling over there. So we got to hustle up. So <laughs> let's, um, let's start hitting these torques real quick. Uh, the first torque is the torque from the middle of the ladder. Don't look around for it. Why are you doing that? Uh, I'm going to go with 1.5, 200, and sine of 30. Good? I know I got to hurry because they're ahead of me. I don't want them to be ahead of me. Uh, any questions about that? Are you sure? Because I'm going to expect you to do it, but now I'm in a hurry. All right, well, where's the next one? Where's the next torque act? Uh, two, meters. two meters. All right. And how much is that, that force? 800. 800. And what's the angle upon which it acts? Uh, 30. Oh, yay. All right. One more left. Well, that sucker's all the way at the end of the ladder. I'm going to put it in there. Three. How big is that force? We have no idea. W. w oh, I put NW. You can put W. It's okay. I'm not going to judge. But let's, let's be careful. We're not sine 30. What is it? 60. Sine 60. That's right. Okay. So now we're up to where that person... Okay. So now we can do the right-hand rule. I was a little nervous. So um, I'm going to come all the way over here because it's fun to watch you guys do it. And um, I'm going to start at the pivot point. I'm going to point towards where the first uh, force is. And I'm going to notice that my finger's all dangly down here right where it is. I don't have to do nothing, do I? Do you see what I'm saying? I understand that it's not straight down, but if I can move my finger and still kind of line it up, I'm defining a plane. And my thumb is either into that plane or out of that plane, so the plane is still defined. The only time I'm in trouble is if this is zero degrees, then it doesn't define a plane. Or if it's 180 degrees, then it doesn't define a plane. Anything else, even one degree off, it defines a plane. So, we're good? That's into the board. Is into the board positive or negative? Negative. negative. Can, we, uh, can we go ahead and do both and know that they're both going to be negative? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank gosh, because I have to walk the whole two meters back over here. It's a lot of walking for an old man like me. All right, let's go back over here. We got our last one. All right, starting with my pivot point. Points all the way over to here. Boy, I am tempted to just do that. But we know this is wrong. Especially in school. If you flip the fingers and you're doing a one of these, you're doing it wrong. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find an example. Good afternoon, Griffin. Please drive. <laughs> All the water! We're so close to the weekend. I'm so excited. All right. So that's going to make that sucker positive, right? I mean, I'm not trying to be a, a, a... I know I've been screwing around a lot today. I'm just all weak. But you have to flip your wrist over this way. All right? You don't switch your fingers. There's, there are people who will do this, especially in e and You got to make sure you understand. The idea here is you're trying to judge which side of your crossed vectors your, your result's supposed to be. It's defining a plane. So we get over here, flip it over. I'm out of the board. Out of the board is positive. Now, I got to say this because 
I'm, I am not a stickler for these kinds of rules. Into the board is an arbitrary choice of whether it's positive or negative. Just like up doesn't always have to be positive. I've been saying that out of the board is positive because that's what your textbook says. But you understand, arbitrary choice, pick the one that works for you and stay with it. That's all you have to worry about. But with that being said, all we got to do now is balance these torques. They have to sum to be equal to zero. So 1.5 times 200 times a half, that's going to be 150. So negative 150. 2 times 800 times a half, that's going to be 800. And then plus 3 times 0.866, right? Square root of 3 over 2 times NW. All is equal to 0. Normal force from the wall. We need it. Who's got it? 365.7. Good job, Newtons. Are we done? No, but we're very close. Look, pulling this whole problem together, normal force from the wall has to equal the frictional force. And friction must be less than or equal to mu times the normal force from the ground. Just going to do the math. 365.7 newtons must be less than or equal to my unknown coefficient of static friction times 1,000 newtons. Right? Normal force in the ground right here. So I asked you, bless you, what is the minimum coefficient of friction necessary to keep the ladder in place? Mu must be greater than or equal to 0 0.3657. This is a very straightforward question. As a ladder problem goes, it is not terrible. Uh, the problem in your homework, similar problem, but instead of having numbers, it's a symbolic problem. You have to do it symbolically. All right, folks.